Shalom, peace, blessings, and love to you and your families, and may your Howell bless the sins here as always. So this is a video in regards to the one I made earlier today. I was a bit angry, and you know, I just want to basically say that, you know, I'm, I'm alright now. You know, I've collected my thoughts, and I'm not going to be angry, because, you know, it tells us how the Most High, how he's compassionate, he's gracious, and he's slow to anger, so we're not better than the Most High. You know, I just want to go ahead and also say that, uh, I mentioned in my video how I was going to take some people off for of Facebook as friends. You know, how I was going to unfollow some pages, which that I meant. But uh, as far as the people, I'm not going to take them off. You know, I choose to deal with them. All right. I'm going to deal with them because why? I'm not the idol shepherd. I'm not your Jesus Christ. See, that? that's what he does. People don't want to follow in his ways. Right. People don't want to bow down to him. Then, you know, he basically, he deserts them. I'm not going to do that to you. I was flock. But rather, I'm going to teach them the word, all right? And if Jacob want to continue to fight, then we can wrestle Jacob, all right? I won't take it personal, all right? So this is why I said in this video, I'm going to be more calm. It's just earlier, you know, that's the first thing I've seen in my news feeds for the past days. Just a whole bunch of carnal stuff. And after a while, it gets, it gets to me. You understand? Because we have to do better than that. We have to do better than that. If not, then we're going to continue to be looked at as, you know, violent as thugs as criminals all right we have to do better so through the spirit of the most high Yahweh, let's go ahead and uh start off in psalms 103 and 8 and it says here Yahweh is compassionate and gracious slow to anger abounding in love he will not always accuse nor will he harbor his anger forever he does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our inequities. Why? Is it because of you or because of me or because of anybody? No. All right. First of all, we have to understand it's all because of the sake of his name. So let's read in Deuteronomy 4 and 31. For Yahweh, your God, is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your ancestors, which he confirmed to them by oath. Verse 32. Acts now about the former days. Long before your time, from the day the Most High created human beings on the earth, Acts from one end of the heavens to the earth, has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has anything like it ever been heard of? Verse 33. Has any other people heard the voice of the Most High speaking out of fire as you have and lived right because it says how his words is a fire he puts his words in our mouth this is why we are considered to be his messengers his servants right his angels that's the reason why we're not so you know nobody's supposed to worship a messenger a prophet or an angel we're supposed to worship Yahweh the words of Yahweh the word is Yahweh, and Yahweh is God, okay? So, again, let's read it carefully. Has any other people heard? Because he says that he has revealed his word to Jacob, you understand? His statutes, his decrees, they were given to Yasharal. The other nations don't know better. This is why it's our job to teach them, because we know better. You see, we took his words to heart. We heard them. You understand? We, 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 we took it to heart. We see them. So this is why we're able to understand it. This is why it says you must keep his words in your sight. Right? You got to keep that fire in your eyes. That's his words. So it says, you know, and, you know, before we continue, that's the reason why the scripture says that uh, it says your word is like a lamp to my feet. You understand? Because that's what's going to guide you. So, again. Has any other people heard the voice of the Most High speaking out of fire? As you have and lived. Verse 34. Has any God ever tried to take for himself one nation out of another nation by testings, by signs, by wonder, by war, by a mighty hand and outstretched arm, or by great and awesome deeds? Sorry, or by great and awesome deeds like all the things Yahweh your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes alright so again you have to be spiritual minded so you can see these things this is why it says before your very eyes this is why the scripture tells you to keep you know keep his words in your sight 
Do not let it depart because then you're going to forget everything the Most High did for his people. All right? Including what he was going to do right now in these times. A lot of you have forgotten it because you've been believing the lies of your enemies, man. Okay? So this is why there's a lot of confusion. This is why there's a lot of strife. But we have to get it right. Verse 35 says, You were showing these things so that you might know that Yahweh is God. Okay? So that you might know. This is why it says, you know, you have to consider it. You have to understand. You have to meditate on his words. Joshua 1 and 8. You have to meditate on it. You are your own worst enemy. All right? You know, you can go ahead and argue and debate with anybody else in the world. But you have to understand that you have to take the words of the Most High Yahweh to heart. Okay? You were showing these things. So that you might know that Yahweh is God. Besides him, there is no other. That's what he told you. Do not worship him in the form of a man, the form of a woman, the form of anything. Because that's what people are doing today. Isaiah 43 and 25. It says here, I, even I am he who blots out your transgressions. So you see why it says, has any God tried to take out a nation from another? Because Yahweh, your God, is the one who blots out your transgressions. All these other so-called gods, they're breathless. They cannot do anything for you. Whether it's good or bad, they can't do anything for you. Okay? So this is why it says, I, even I am he who blots out your transgressions. For why? For my own sake. And remembers your sins no more. Verse 26. Review the past for me. Let us argue the matter together. State the case for your innocence. You see? So this is why the Most High Yahweh says that he would not accuse them forever. They have to be willing and obedient. You cannot keep continue to follow in your own ways. Or you cannot continue to follow in the ways that these religions, that these churches, that these pastors, these elders have been teaching us. You have to let all that go. Isaiah 48 and 9. For my own name's sake, I delay my wrath. For the sake of my praise, I hold it back from you. You see what I'm saying? So this is the reason why the Most High God says he's trying to create a blessing on the earth. He's not trying to destroy. He's not trying to, you know, cause any harm to anybody. There's only the wicked, only the violent. They want that. This is what they want. Okay? But the Most High God says that He's delaying His wrath for the sake of my praise. I hold it back from you so as not to destroy you completely. The Most High God, He wants you to get it right. He wants you to get His name right. He wants you to take His words to heart. All for the sake of His praise. All for the sake of His name. Do you see that? That's the reason why you are still living. Okay, it's not because, you know, you've been believing in the right thing for all these years. No, no, it's for the sake of Yahweh's name. He wants you to get it right. And for the sake of his praises, he's still expecting you to, you know, to offer those pure incense offerings to him. Those prayers, those praises. So, now we're going to read this here in Jeremiah 9 and 4. This is why it says this here. Beware of your friends. Do not trust anyone in your clan. You see what I'm saying? So, again, you know, you've probably been studying the Word with these group of people for years, and you've been, you know, you've been taught that, you know, what they believe in is the right way and all this other stuff. But the Most High God, Yahweh, your God, who only gave you His words, and He told you to pay attention to them, He said to beware of your friends. Do not trust anyone in your clan. For every one of them is a deceiver, and every friend a slanderer. Why? Because they're not speaking according to the words of Yahweh. Okay? Again, the Most High Yahweh says... Uh, 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 you know, those who speak according to his words, they are the ones who are enlightened. They are the ones who have been anointed, rather say. All right? We don't want to get anybody confused, but they are the ones who have been anointed with Yahweh's words. That's the reason why the Most High God says that, you know, the wise will shine brighter than the stars. Because they're going to be anointed with the Most High Yahweh's words. They're going to speak according to his words. So Jeremiah 9 and 5 says, Friend deceives friend, and no one speaks the truth. They have taught their tongues to lie. They worry themselves with sinning. Which, you know, this also goes uh, hand in hand with this here. Let's see if we can find this. Isaiah 59 and 4. No one calls for justice. No one pleads a case with integrity. They rely on empty arguments. They utter lies. They conceive trouble and give birth to evil. So, Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 6. You live in the midst of deception. In their deceit, they refuse to acknowledge me, declares Yahweh. 
verse 7 says, Therefore this is what Yahweh Almighty says, See, I will refine and test them. For what else can I do? Because of the sin of my people. You see that? So, you know, pretty much this is why, you know, I said that, you know, I didn't, I didn't mean to get like that earlier. I, I hate to get like that. You understand that? Okay, I rarely get like that because, again, you know, the most highest words, they bring joy to my heart. And I always try to stay in a, in a, in a joyful spirit. You understand? I always try to be happy. As much as everything else may be falling apart around me, I always try to be happy. All right? So, again, I don't like to get like that. But at the same time, I don't like to see the things that's going on within our people. It's, it's stressful. I mean, the most high God said this, this is the time when we're supposed to be refined, you know, being refined through his words. We're not supposed to be following the ways of these nations no more. We were following it for too long. All right? You have to stop hating on one another because of their skin color, because of their hair. Because, of, you know, you have to understand that we are brothers and sisters. These people don't like to see this. Okay? So this is why it says, see, I will refine and test them. For what else can I do because of the sin of my people? So Jeremiah 3 and, 3 and 14 says, Return faithless people, declares Yahweh, for I am your husband. I will choose you one from a town and two from a clan and bring you to Zion, which is happening now, all right? So this is why the Most High God says that you can't trust everybody in your clan because you probably thought that, you know, you've been following the right thing for all these years and, you know, not, you know nobody can tell you anything, but you never heard this right here, okay? This is why you have to be willing and obedient because the Most High God says that he's going to snatch one from a town and two from a clan. So probably your brother or your sister that you was brother and sister with for like 20, 30 years, probably they're not going to get it, but you are. That's why you got to worry about you, all right? You have to be willing to let go of what you've been taught. You understand? You have to be willing to understand this, what, what, what your God wants you to understand. This is why it says that I will choose you, one from a town and two from a clan. Whether you used to go to churches, you know, whether you used to be in some kind of, you know, group, cult, camp, whatever you want to call it. Those are the clans that the Most High Yahweh is bringing one from and, and two from. All right, like it says here, sorry. Which, you know, this goes hand in hand with Zechariah chapter 12, verse 11. On that day, the weeping in Yahweh Washington will be as great as the weeping of Hadad Rimon in the plain of Megiddo. The land will mourn each clan by itself. That's why the Most High God, he will bring you to Zion. All right, because you, why? You're going to be ashamed of, of, of the way that you were. You have to feel the burden in order for you to learn. That's a good thing, all right? Don't despise it. That's a good thing. You have to feel the burn in order for you to learn. This is why you have to throw your pride out and your arrogance. See, all that goes out the window with your idols too. So that's why it says, the land will mourn each clan by itself. Which, you know, this goes hand in hand with the scripture here, I think. Okay, Ezekiel 7 and 16. The fugitives who escape will flee to the mountains. See that? Most High God told you about, you know, uh, uh, Mount Zion. It's a place with mountains and ravines that drinks rain from heavens, right? So that's why Mount Zion is our refuge, okay? Because the Most High God says that destruction has been decreed for the whole land. So the fugitives who escape will flee to the mountains. Like doves of the valleys, they will all mourn, each for their own sins. So you see why it's, it's good for you to feel the, feel the burn so you can learn. All right, when I say feel the burn, I'm talking about for you to, to acknowledge the words. That's what I'm talking about, you know, for those that are not sure. The words of the Most High is a fire. That's what refines us. So that's what I'm saying. You have to feel the burn in order for you to learn. Zechariah 12 and 12. The land will mourn, each clan by itself with their wives by themselves, the clan of the house of Dawad and their wives, the clan of the house of Nathan and their wives. So now let's read Jeremiah 31 and 27. The days are coming, declares Yahweh, when I will plant the kingdoms of Yahshua and Yahweh with the offspring of people and of animals. Just as I washed over them to uproot and tear down and to overthrow, destroy and bring disaster, so you see that? So, I will watch over them to build and to plant. This is why we cannot despise nobody no more about their, you know, you can't make it about their skin color, their hair, 
things like that, you can't do that no more. You have to let go of that. All right, you got to change those garments. That's that. That's that's you know that's that red garment that you win. That's the garments of your enemies. That's what they have taught you to be violent. You know, to make it about skin color, separation, and division. So this is why it says that the Most High, He's building this highway here, so that you know we can we can worship the Most High Yahweh together. You understand? That remnant from Yashara, Assyria, and Egypt. And these people are going to be looking many kinds of colors. They're going to be speaking many different kind of ways. We cannot despise these people. If they are willing to understand the ways of the Most High, if they are willing to, you know, honor the name of Yahweh, then they are part of us. Okay? So, that says here, I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares Yahweh. So now let's read this here. Genesis chapter 30, verse 32. Let me go through all your flocks. By the way, this is Jacob Prosperous. So let me go through all your flocks today and remove from them every speckled or spotted sheep. Again, this is uh, Jacob, you know, making an agreement with Laban, Rachel and Leah's father. All right, so it says here, let me go through all your flocks today and remove from them every speckled or spotted sheep, every dark colored lamb and every spotted or speckled goat. They will be my wages. You see that? Every dark colored lamb, every spotted or speckled goat. So this is why the Most High Yahweh says that you cannot despise the foreigners. Okay, because they were going to be part of Jacob. Let's read this here in Micah chapter 5. Well, you know what? Before we go ahead and read that, let's continue to read a little bit more. Genesis 30 and 33. And my honesty will test will testify for me in the future. You see that? Whenever you check on the wages you have paid me, any goat in my possession that is not speckled or spotted, or any lamb that is not dark colored, will be considered stolen. So that's why it says this here. Micah chapter 5 verse 7. The remnant of Jacob will be in the midst of many peoples, like dew from Yahweh, like showers on the grass, which do not wait for anyone or depend on men. Okay? Again, in the midst of many peoples. So this is why it says in Zechariah chapter 9 verse 11. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pits. Yeah. See that? What is the waterless pits? Those churches, those religions. Verse 12 says, return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. So now let's read. Isaiah 14 and 1. That says, Yahweh will have compassion on Jacob. Once again, he will choose Yahshua and will settle them in their own land. Foreigners will join them and unite with the descendants of Jacob. See that? That's the, that's the prisoners, okay, that are in those waterless pits. This is why we're not supposed to despise them. Okay, this is why you got to share your food and your drink with those who are hungry and thirsty. It's the right thing. Isaiah 58 and 6. Is not this the kind of fasting I chosen to I have chosen to? Sorry. It's sorry. It's not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to lose the chains of injustice and unite the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. So this is why you have to be speaking according to the words of the Most High. You have to be willing to you know, you have to be willing to do the will of the Most High, not your own will. Because if not, then you're going to be doing the will of Satan. You're going to be going against his will and everything that he has chosen to, to uh, ordain, or rather say, ordain to happen. So again, it's not this, the kind of fasting I have ordained, I have chosen, right? To loose the chains of injustice and unite the cords of the yoke. To set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Verse 7. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Verse 8. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of Yahweh will be your rear guard. 
And with that, peace, blessings, and love to you and your families.